Box plots are a way of representing the mean, median and the different quartiles of a data in a visual manner. So let's see how we can draw a box plot. So a box plot is drawn like that. So you will see a rectangular box and then a line above it and a line below it. So in this diagram, this represents the maximum in the data. So we also call maximum as the fourth quartile and minimum. This is the minimum as the zeroth quartile as we had seen in the earlier video. And the scale is this way increasing. So if this is a value, let's say 10 here, then this will be a value greater than 10, maybe 100. So this thing denotes minimum or zeroth quartile. This is fourth quartile. This is first quartile, the bottom of the box, the solid box, this denotes the first quartile. And this top of the box denotes third quartile. And we had also seen in our earlier video that we have interquartile range, which is third quartile minus first quartile. So this is our interquartile range, IQR. And this is the second quartile or median. So this is the median of our data. And this dot denotes the mean. And the mean lies between first and third quartile. This can be above median or below median, as we had seen examples in our previous video. Now let's see how this is helpful in uh, interpreting the data. So one, you can guess that by just looking at this plot, you get an idea of the various representations of various uh, measures of that, that given data, just from this single plot. Now let's see an example where we are comparing uh, the student scores in a class in two subjects for let's say maths and this is physics and this is the scale let's say minimum marks is zero maximum is 100 and in this maths the minimum was somewhere around here maybe 10 and maximum was around 95. And in physics, you can also see that maximum is around same as the maximum of maths. So let's say for physics also maximum is 95. Here the minimum was 10, but for physics, it was a tough paper. And let's say the minimum is five, somebody got five. And you also see that uh, there is more dispersion, the maths marks are more dispersed. If we see interquartile range, so its interquartile range is a smaller range, but if you see the overall range, it's 85 here, because overall range is from here to here. But for this case, overall range is 90. But the, the Overall range is not a good indicator of the data as we had seen because just one data point can really change the range. But this interquartile range is a more appropriate measure of dispersion. So we will be concerned mainly with interquartile range when, when I say range. So here we see that there is a more distribution, more dispersion in this data, maths marks, and there is less dispersion in physics marks. That is, on an average, you can see that the physics marks are on a lower side, maybe due to toughness of the paper. So let's say this is 50 and this is uh, 15. This is 20. And this is 80. So interquartile range of maths is 60. For physics, it's 35, so it's more dispersed. And here, the median score is quite low. You can see here, it's somewhere around uh, 40, not 40 even, 30, maybe 32. And here it's 
close to 50. So the median score of maths is 50, for physics it's 32. But somebody got uh, higher marks also, that shifts the mean above median. But in this case, mean is below median. So in this way, you can use this box plot diagram of different data sets to compare uh, the various indicators in that.